So the question is, will it kill? What do you think, Finn? Will it kill? Specifically speaking, I'm talking about the Mount Albion culture, otherwise known as the Mac. The unique thing about this, this culture was uh, they only existed along the front range of Colorado. They weren't deep in the mountains. They weren't farther north in Wyoming. They weren't even far south. They were really along that, uh, you know, Boulder County, Laramie County, even some of Jefferson County, all along that front range. If you think Boulder, Colorado, that's pretty much where they were. Now, the unique thing about this culture is that they had um, some pretty simple stone tools. They made a lot of their projectile points out of argillite, quartz, and quartzite. And let me tell you, as a napper, these are not the most desirable stones to be napping with. Yes, you can produce a point from them, but it is very uh, difficult to run long flakes. When we compare it to some of the other Paleo Indians that existed, they had long, lancelet style projectiles for spears and atlatls. You know, we think of like the Folsom, we think of the Clovis, we think of Dalton's, we think of all these long blades. The Mount Albion culture did not have that. They had very small projectiles, chunky, blocky, something you would think is not a very, you know, uh, ideal projectile to be hunting with when employing an atlatl. They were pointy. They did have simple notching on the sides and sometimes in the corners for hafting into an atlatl dart, an atlatl foreshaft. Compared to what we see in other Paleo Indian sites, um, they just don't compare. Question, will it kill, is something myself and Dr. Devin Pettigrew are gonna be answering when we do our third bison experiment. Uh, still employing a lot of the traditional points, a lot of those Paleo Indian points to see if an atlatl is an effective tool against something like a bison, but we're also going to be employing some of the Mac uh, points. So with the snow that's, uh, you know, almost just about completely melted, the rain that we've had the past couple days is definitely going to expose some fresh quartz. I'm going to nap up some points at a later date. We'll get them hafted up into some four shafts and then uh, you'll be able to see what they do to a, a bison in the upcoming uh, bison experiment. All right, let's go collect some stone. Got a bunch of it, we'll see what we can do with it and uh, hopefully we get some results because I got to half these on some four shafts and put them in at the side of a bison. Is what it is. Mm. 
you're not really pulling off flakes, you're pulling off more like chunky pieces. It's not the end of the world, but it might take some getting used to. All right, this isn't too bad. Now again, I mean, in a pinch, all of this stuff right here, all these little pieces of debutage and flakes, I mean, you could half that up and shoot that at, you know, some small game if needed, or even put some refining touches on it. So it's not the worst. It's just that you're not starting with big monster pieces. Yes, there's big pieces of it, but as you can see, it's just riddled with cracks and God knows what else. But we'll see if we can get some small projectiles out of it, see what we can come up with. You know, a lot of nappers might go to copper in this case, but I think this is one of the beauties of being a napper is being able to take a point that we know exists and being able to replicate it exactly how they would have done it with something like stone and definitely different antler tines to pressure flake it. When you look at some of the projectile points that have been uh, recovered from the Mount Albion site, you'll see, I mean, they are not, you know, from a napping standpoint, they're not the prettiest, but I mean, again, it goes to my saying, you make your tools first, keep the aesthetics for a later date. Facial. Sharp. Keep cutting myself. A little bit of shade, picked the wrong spot right in the sun, but it's coming along. There's not a lot of elaborate sort of things to these guys, so just It. Notching. There wasn't a lot to these. I think this is. That's kind of it. Very simple, simple hafting, simple notches. Not too bulky, but I could put that on an atlatl. One down. The worst. Course, there's lots of like little, little cracks, but let's see if we can turn that into something. 
It's just gnarly looking. Very irregular. All right, I'm calling it. That's four points. Um, I definitely think these three are good to go for an atlatl. This one might be a little bit small, but you know we'll give it a test again. This material is all this quartz and, and, and quartzite, all this debitage that you see down here. It is local uh, to the Colorado Mountains, specifically up in that front range. There is tons of it. And I think for that Albion culture, they were just utilizing the resources and the materials that they came across. Nothing too extravagant. All these points are big and bulky and chunky with real shallow notches. Real simple just to throw it on an atlatl four shaft and uh, get it into action. Will these kill? I believe they will. I believe a couple throws into a bison with the right throw, the right uh, you know spot in that actual bison getting inside that thoracic cavity. I definitely believe any one of these points would create a huge wound cavity, ultimately leading to a bleed out. The best part is really just being able to recreate these uh, projectile points using the same stone, the same exact uh, tools, as well as you know doing it in the area that they would have done it in. So will it kill? We'll find out here shortly when uh, myself and Dr. Devin Pettigrew line ourselves up with another bison and start putting atlatl darts in it, testing all those theories. Can ancient man, can ancient people kill bison, megafauna, if you will, with uh, atlatls and simple stone tools? Well, we've done it once, we've done it twice. Third time, we're going bigger, we're going badder, and I think you guys will enjoy. Appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.